Hello, in this video I'm going to show you an example of the bisection, bisection method to find the roots of an equation, in this case it's this quadratic equation and we have our initial interval between 1 and 2 Okay. The first thing we need to do is calculate the function, the y value, at each of these two initial points so for x equals 1, y is equal to, so y at 1 equals 1 squared minus 2, so it's 1 minus 2 is minus 1 and we do the same for the second point for x equals 2 the function at that point x equals 2 is 2 squared so we're solving in the x values in this equation 2 squared minus 2, that's 4 minus 2, 2 now what's important here is the sign more than the actual value, so this value here is negative so at x equals 1 the function is negative, at x equals 2 the function is positive so here it's positive that means that between this point and that point the line has to cross the x-axis at the point of where the root is so if we do a small diagram that's a very small sketch here, our points for x were 1 and 2 and at 1 the function is somewhere down here and the 2, the function is somewhere up there, so I'm going to just put two points there's a point here and there's a point here, so in between somewhere there the function crosses the x-axis and that is the root of the function so we don't know exactly where, but somewhere there there is a, that point okay, so how do we find that point, zoom in more into this interval and find the point. So the bisection method gives us a formula to calculate uh, the midpoint. Okay, so basically the bisection method is based on we split the interval into two halves and then we check looking at the signs of the function at each of the points if the root happens on the left or on the right of that midpoint. So we're going to calculate the midpoint. So I'm going to call it xm which is going to be, sorry, it's going to be 1 plus 2, 3, di oops, sorry, divided by 2, so it's 1.5 and then we check what the function is at that point, so y at 1.5 equals 1 1.5 squared minus 2 and the function at that point is 0 0.25 positive so it's a positive sign this point here, the 1.5, is in between here and here that means that in between there's a plus sign here now is when we need to decide if our new interval goes between 1 and 1.5 or between 1.5 and 2 we check those last two numbers, between 1.5 and 2 we have positive and positive so the root is not going to be in that side whereas between 1 and 1.5 at 1 is negative and at 1.5 is positive so that's going to be our new interval so we we'll write here, our new interval is going to go between 1 and 1.5 I'm going to add the signs for y at each of those two points, so remember at 1 it was negative, at 1.5 it was positive and we're going to repeat the same process, calculate the midpoint we'll put the sign up here and then decide if the sign change is happening and therefore the root on the left or on the right ok, so let's go the midpoint is going to be 1 plus 1.5 divided by 2 and that gives us 1.25 and we calculate the function y at 1.25 that's going to be 1.25 squared minus 2 and that is approximately minus 0.43 and we go again to our discussion we have at 1 is negative at 1.5 it's positive at 1.25 in between the value is negative so between 1 negative and 1.25 negative there's no sign change 
So we forget about the left hand side and we're keeping the 1.25 and 1.5 because one is negative. The y value is negative here and the y value is positive here. So the sign change we know is happening there and hence the root is in that new interval. So our new interval is going to be between 1.25 and 1.5. Again, we are going to write the signs on the side or underneath. So at 1.25 it was negative, at 1.5 it was positive. And we repeat the process again. First we calculate the midpoint. Midpoint between 1.25 and 1.5 is 1.375. And then we calculate the function at that point, 3.75. And the value is negative minus 0 0.1094 negative. Okay, so this value is negative. So we check for the next interval. Okay, so our new interval. Sorry, we need to decide our new interval. So we have here, we have that the midpoint is negative so from 1.25 to 1.375 negative negative it doesn't cross the x-axis whereas from this point to 1.5 it does cross the x-axis that means that our new interval so that's our new interval between the midpoint in the previous iteration and the 1.5 midpoint and 1.5 we keep the right hand side because that's where the sign is changing between this value and the value, nothing happened. We're on the same side of the equal sign or the x axis, sorry. Okay, so I'm gonna keep our values here, it's negative, and here on this other point, it's positive. So now we repeat the process, calculate the midpoint, the function at that midpoint, check what the sign is, put it here, and then see if the sign is changing on the left or on the right. Calculate the midpoint. And then the function at that mean midpoint. This is the value of the function at our midpoint. It's a positive value. Then we go to our interval and at our midpoint it's positive here in the middle. So between the left and the middle we start with negative, then it becomes positive, so it crosses the x-axis. Between the middle middle and the right-hand side of our interval, it stays on the positive side of the x-axis. So the sign change and the root is happening here on the left, meaning that we're going to keep 1.375 and 1.375. So our new interval is going to be 1.375 and 1.4375. With our signs for each of them, the function at this point is negative, the function at this point is positive. Repeat the process, midpoint, function at the midpoint, and after this one, this part, next particular point and the new interval, we'll check about the accuracy. And the value for the new midpoint is 1.4063, and the value of the function at that point is minus 0 0.022. If we check, so this is we put our sign here, it's negative, and if we add that to our interval, we have negative and negative, nothing happens, so we forget about the 1.375, and we're going to keep the middle point, our 1.0, uh, sorry, 1.4063 and 1.4375, because the one is negative, the function is negative at this midpoint, and the function is positive, so it changes sign, and hence the root will be there. So let's write the next interval. So we're keeping the midpoint on the left, 1.4063, and we're keeping the right. Okay, now the difference between these two, if we calculate the difference, put in the bigger number before just to get a positive value but remember your accuracy is plus minus 
a particular number so it doesn't matter if you do it the other way around you just forget about the sign when you were calculating the absolute value of that subtraction and that difference is 0 0.0312 so if our question had said that we are looking for an accuracy of 0.1 this value is smaller than 0.1 okay we can stop at this point so this is a summary of the bisection method. I hope it's clear and this is it.